we're going to look at uh, processing deer today. Yep. And so this is if maybe you don't have a butcher near you that takes deer, or maybe not one that you like, uh, or for any reason you just want to get more involved in actually doing the deer yourself. So we'll start off with a little bit of gear here. And I will say that from my perspective that doing it yourself gives you better cuts than usually what you get from a, a quick job from a butcher. Uh, and it makes you really know that what you're getting. You know you're getting your deer too. It's gonna be a little more personally satisfying. So to start, um, bare minimum, what you need to do it yourself is right here on the table. Yeah, you need a knife, uh, you just need a knife. In a, a nicer world, as sharp as possible, I like to have at least a boning knife and uh, like a fillet knife of some sort. Um, but if you just have one good knife, you will be okay. Uh, you can even use one of those little uh, replaceable blade knives. If that's all you've got, you can use that. And if you don't have a sharp knife, use one of those because that you can just put a fresh blade on it and you'll have a sharp knife. Uh, other than that, you're going to need, I go freezer paper and freezer bag. You can also go with uh, like plastic wrap. You can do double layer plastic wrap and then do freezer paper on top of that. I've found that freezer paper and Ziploc, you know, freezer bag works just fine. It'll keep well for over a year. Uh, but also you can pull freezer paper off of frozen meat and you'll just have exposed meat. You can just salt it right away instead of having to like thaw it a little more to get the plastic wrap off. Uh, I found that 75 square feet will do one whitetail just fine. That's all you need for one deer. Uh, you need a cutting board and a work service. So there's your minimum. So if you want, over here we're going to have the nice to haves and highly recommend it as well. Uh, I use gloves. You can use your hands, wash your hands well before you do it. But gloves protects the deer from you and you from the deer. So it's a little better. Cut glove, uh, cut resistant glove, uh, I found works very well. And every now and then I cut myself if I don't use it. So it's worth having on your non-dominant hand. The saw will help you make some cuts that you couldn't otherwise. So you'll it'll expand what you can do if you have a, a saw. Uh, you also, yeah, we mentioned earlier, but you're gonna need uh, masking tape or a freezer tape and a label with um, and a beer. Also, to start with, you want to disinfect your surfaces. I make sure that I use a uh, food safe disinfectant uh, so that, that, like for example, Microban, it works for 24 hours and it doesn't say anything about being food safe on it. That might be a little too much. So I use a food safe a surface disinfectant. Uh, on, on all my work surfaces. And also you need a deer and trash can for scraps. Other than that, you'd be good to go. Uh, so here's a front leg from a deer. Front legs and back legs are different. Front legs are tougher than the back legs. Uh, and this is what you're gonna use for a lot of your grinding meat, your burgers, uh, jerky uh, and cuts you'll get out of here. So here's the shank. And then the shoulder blade scapula is here and you have the intermediate part, which I'm sure has a name. Um, one option is to go through the joint and remove the shank and have it as a shank cut separately. Uh, I like to do that more with the rear leg because the rear shank is bigger. So this one I'm just going to strip the meat off of the whole thing for uh, burger and sausage meat. Uh, another option is if it's a younger deer, especially if it's like a, a six month deer, like a, like a first year deer, I'll take the shank and I'll leave from here to here. And I'll leave that as a bone-in shoulder roast, and you can braise it and roast it in various ways, and that's pretty good. It's better on a younger deer for two reasons. One, the meat's already a little more tender, and two, it's a little bit smaller, so it'll fit inside your crock pot or your Dutch oven a little bit. So the way I start a front leg is I find the scapula. You can find the edges of it here. And then there's a ridge on the top of the scapula, the top meaning the outside, the side faces away from the animal. You can find it, the bone right there, and you can run your blade, your boning blade, right down one side of it. This is the outside I'm going. Go all the way up, you can see the bone here, all the way to the end, and then do the other side. And from here, you peel away, you find the edge of the bone, and you cut along the edge of the bone. Find, you can drag your tip across it. You see these little ridges that you get as you just scrape right along the top of the bone. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. 
and you're going to wrap around. After the scapula, you have this knee joint. I cut right down to the bone, and I, again, I follow the bone, and I wrap all the meat off. Between the scapula and this piece, you can take it all off almost in one piece. And then the uh, shank is a li little different, but it's the same idea. You cut to the bone on one line, and then you just scrape all the way around it. So when you're cutting, you're just making sure that you can feel the bone with your knife, right? Yep, uh, while trying to be not quite on it. Because in a perfect world, you never touch it any more than you have to, because you mm -hmm. will dull your blade. Yeah. Uh, so there's, this is all the meat from right there. And then we'll also do the shank. Okay, so now we have basically all the meat off of the front leg, and what you can do from here is your call. Uh, you can joint them, break out the bones, and if you're going to keep the bones for soup stock, just cut. I just cut it once, right down the middle of each one. And what that does is it opens up the marrow and it makes the pieces smaller so that they're easier to fit into a pot together. A little meat, a bit of meat on the bone is just fine. That just adds to the, the stock flavor and everything. So uh, the other thing you want to do with anything you're going to, any piece of meat, uh, especially with deer, you really don't want too much fat on there. The fat isn't very tasty on deer. This was a fat guy. Uh, anything that's probably got dirt or clotted blood or things like that, probably get rid of it. Uh, so use your use your uh, common sense there. Uh, you can feel how hard the fat is sometimes. So you can feel your way into where the muscle and fat line is, by which one's harder. But you trim your fat. So we've deboned the meat and we've gotten the any dirty bits, any bits of fat we don't like, we've trimmed it up. So now what you want to do is your final prep for the grinder. And so to prep it for the grinder, you want to make it into the size of pieces that would easily fit through the hole of the grinder. If you have your own grinder, you'll know what that is, but in general, something about like that chunk, just a chunk that you can easily cube up and feed into the grinder um, as your initial grind. Something you can move the whole mess of it easily through there. So as you start making your grind pile, my butcher, I take these straight to the butcher. 
and make life easy on them. And if it's got a lot of this uh, silver skin and stuff, a lot of sinewy material, that's okay, because you're grinding it. You can put really tough stuff into your grind pile, and you won't be able to tell. When it grinds it up, it's just burger. All right, what's going on guys? So this was originally supposed to be uh, one video, but we ended up just having so much content with it that I'm gonna probably turn it into two or three, most likely three videos going on with this. Let me know in the comments uh, what you guys think, what is something that you do differently or something that you need us to explain more, we'll be happy to get to it. Uh, other than that, like it's February now when we're working in on this, we got turkey season coming up soon. Uh, I'll probably do a little bass fishing, a couple other things, try to get some uh, you know, more content created, pushing it out, but um, looking forward to getting to it. See you guys on the next one.